So let's go ahead and try and build the layout that we had mocked up for the protein tracker application. So here you can see I have the mock up here that I had shown you in one of the previous modules of it's very simple UI, but it'll be a good demonstration to show us how to basically construct a simple layout. Now, the first thing that we need to do is figure out how we're going to break this up. Now, there's a lot of different ways that a person could break this up. We could use several linear layouts, nest these together, and, and there's actually a couple ways that we could do that. We could use relative layouts and specify that this button is below this text box and this text is to the left of this and so on and so forth. We could actually probably even use a table layout, I think, and make these rows. Uh, one of the one of the ways that I usually try to go is with linear layouts because they're just a lot simpler and you don't really scratch your head very much trying to figure out well, how does this actually work. So what I'm going to do for this is actually visualize this in some linear layouts. So the first thing I'm going to do is think about the main layout being a linear layout that's going to be vertical. So it's going to go down the screen. Then I'm thinking that I'm going to have a linear layout for each one of these essentially rows and it's going to be horizontal. So it'll have these two elements and they'll each take up about half of that linear layout. And I'm going to put a blank one here. So there'll be another linear layout right here and then another linear layout here and so forth and so on. And I think that'll make a fairly simple way to divide this screen. Like I said, there's no wrong or right way to do this and I'm not the best UI person, so someone else might have a different opinion on this, but this is how we're going to do it for this demo. So what I have here is inside of our protein tracker application, I've got our main .xml file. And that's our layout file that we're going to use here. And if we look at this, all that it has is a linear layout. I deleted everything else from there. In fact, it's completely blank except for just the linear layout. And then so let's look at how to do this. Now, one thing I like to do is to use a combination of the drag and drop editor and the editing the XML file. I find that it's the best way to do it. The fastest way is to not really solely rely on one or the other, but to kind of use them in conjunction. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is add some linear layouts inside of our linear layout. So let me go ahead and pick a linear layout from this list. I'm going to drop it on here. And then we know we're going to have several other ones. And that's already formatting kind of how we want this to go. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to, we know that we're going to have a text view here and then an edit text. So let's go ahead and drag those controls in. Let's get our text. Okay. And then we're going to grab our edit text. Now those are not formatted correctly. What I'm going to show you how to do here is we, we want them to take up about half of this for each one so that they'll be nicely aligned. And what you can use is a property called the weight. And what that does is if we tell our controls that we want them both to fill up this space, the weight will determine how much of each control gets of it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give them both a weight of one, which means that each one will get 50% because they're equally weighted. So let's go ahead. And this is a place where manually the XML makes the most sense to me. Um, when I get into here, I like to hit control shift F to auto format. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. So if we look at this, we've got our outer linear layout. We've got the ones that we've created and this one that we have our text view and our edit text. So let's go ahead and give our text view text. For now, we'll just hard code this to say protein consumed. And then for this edit text, we don't want it to be pre-populated with any text, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then we actually want this layout width not to be a wrap content, but we want it to be fill parent. So it'll take up as much as it can. And the same with this one. And if we don't do this and we specify the weight, it won't work. It'll, it'll just, all of it will go to one of them. 
So we look at here, this does not look right. That's because we don't have any weight assigned. Now, if we go and we give them each equal weight, I'll use this Android. And then if you hold down control and hit the space bar, it's gonna give you an autocomplete in Eclipse. And this is really nice for finding what you're looking for. In this case, we're looking for layout weight, and we're gonna set this equal to one. And I'm gonna copy this and put this on the edit text also. And then what you will see here is that they're about equally weighted here. And actually, let's add that colon after the protein consume. Now, uh, the text size here is not quite right. So let's increase this text size. And just like we use device independent pixels for specifying widths and heights, for text size, we use a special thing which is scaled pixels, and that's abbreviated SP. So there's actually a property we can use here. We can say Android text size. And I think if I remember correctly, 16 SP should give us about what we're looking for. And yeah, that's a that's about what, what we're looking for here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in some of the rest of this, and then we'll talk about some of the next steps. Okay, so I've filled in a lot of the other controls here. I didn't want to bore you with this all this typing, but you can see here that I've got these other rows filled in, and I've actually got them formatted how we want. But I left this protein consumed one uh, so that we could together go through this and figure out how do we finish this up. So one thing that you'll notice right off the bat here is that we wanted this to be aligned to the edge, to the right edge here. And we can do that. There's a thing called gravity that we can use to basically make the gravity of this control or, or the gravity of this view, everything in it, uh, go to the right. It'll be as if the gravity were turned to the right and this the text inside here will fall to the right. So let's go ahead and do that. And the way we do that is we can go into this text view and we can set on this Android gravity and then we'll set here right. And let's go ahead and look and see what that did. Okay, now you can see that it, it has fallen to the right, but now we've got a problem. It's too close to this edge here. So that's not a problem. We can use a margin to push it off a little bit. So we just go into here and we can do Android and we can do margin, layout margin, right. And then we'll specify this in device independent pixels. And let's do 10 DIP. Okay, now you can see it's offset from, from the center there. So that basically fixes the formatting. And I've done that for all of these controls and I've put in some sample text here. And then there's one last thing that I wanted to show you that I think is kind of a neat little trick. We wanted to have kind of a horizontal bar across here. And you can see that I have a blank layout here. Well, if I give this a background color and then I make that height be just like a couple pixels, then it's gonna give us a nice white little bar. So if we go to this linear layout here, we can actually use an Android built-in color. So I can do Android background equals, and then I'm gonna specify the Android namespace here. So I'm going to do at Android color white. And if that's correct, we should see, yeah, you can see here now that the background is white. Now we can set the size of this. If I just make the height be 2 DIP, now you can see we've got a nice little white bar across here. And let's go ahead and run this in the emulator and see what this looks like. And then it's gonna launch here and we should see our screen. And here we go, looks pretty good. Not, uh, not the best, but I'm not a UI expert. Someone who has a little bit more design talent could perhaps design something a little nicer. And, uh, but this is a good place to start. And this is kind of how I go when I'm designing a UI in Android is I'll just take a little piece at a time, come up with the sketch of what I want, kind of get, 
get it looking that way and then slowly you make it a little bit better you figure out oh maybe i'd like to change this this should be formatted this way and you, you just kind of evolve that design until you get to that point so uh, let's take one more quick look at the file just to look at some of the some of the things that we have going on here it gets a little bit complicated you can break these out into different sections especially if you're going to reuse it but that's a little bit more of an advanced topic some of the things to note here though i want to make sure that before we we leave that we talk about this is i i haven't given good names for ids because this is just a demo here but obviously you're going to want to use meaningful names here especially when you're going to want to reference this from the code with the text here i've hard coded this text this is also not good. We we can use this at string, right? And we can actually use a text from our resource file. And so, and actually when you do this through the UI, if you go and we said edit text, here it's automatically gonna try and reference it from the resource. So this is the better practice for sure. And then that's pretty much all there is to it. You can get more complicated with the UI, of course, and you can add more to this. But here's a simple UI. And there's actually just one more trick I want to show you that I've been using here, which is I have this little thing turned on that is going to show you the grid of what the borders for the layout is, the outline. That's really nice, actually, for figuring out what is going on with the layout, especially when you start having a lot of nested layouts using that option really helps a lot. So that's it for the Android UI. Hopefully you've learned enough to be able to create your own Android UI. Obviously we haven't covered all of the properties that are available on the UI elements, but you can look those up on the Android developer site and it's pretty self-explanatory. If you run into a problem, you can always use that Android developer site as a reference and it's you can actually pretty much do anything that you would want to do it's very extensive as far as all the properties and the things that you can do with the android ui